Hey everyone, Cool Kid here. If you don't care about any of this exposition, jump to the timestamp on screen, but I would like to explain real quick what this video is and why it exists. In short, this is a collection of the first 10 episodes of Weird and Obscure Stuff, but with as many inaccurate entries as I could find removed, and anything I didn't explain well the first time around moved to its own new section at the end. I also want to apologize for how jacked up the audio quality is throughout this series. I thought about re-recording everything, but realized it would be a monumental amount of work for very little gain. Just, I don't know, use bad headphones so it's harder to notice. Anyways, with all that out of the way, let's rock. When playing Nidus, if you hold your first ability, you get a rectangle showing the hitbox of virulence. It doesn't do great with slopes, though. It also shows your maggots through walls, and also gives them a little UI element, which is kinda cool. If you build up enough damage while holding Garuda's 1, the UI will display the damage in scientific notation. In Excavation, you can pick up a power cell as your Warframe, and then pick up another as your Operator. Sevagoth's Shadow can do Parazon finishers, but only on Thralls, Hounds, Liches, and Sisters. I know I have a whole video on this, fuck off. Wisp is the only Warframe in the game to have a unique hard landing animation. Certain tiles only appear in invasion missions. Speaking of invasions, if the attacking force wins in a Corpus vs. Grenier invasion, the winner will then occupy the node. This means that you can temporarily fight Grenier in Corpus missions and vice versa. Bone Widow's 1 doesn't cost any energy when it misses, but still grants affinity. This means that you can use it to generate affinity infinitely, although it isn't really that efficient. Bone Widow's Iron Bride also has some weird tech associated with it. Basically, if you hold right-click while swinging, you will travel less distance but negate the recovery of the first and second strikes in your three-hit combo. You can also just tap right-click during the recovery frames to cancel the recovery and still get the full range. Frodebeck's ship in the Ambulus boss fight is the old look for the Corpus Obelisk. This is also the case for the ship in Europa's Skybox. Using Revenant's Reeve ability on allies will give them a single charge of Mesmer Skin. Using Loki's Switch Teleport on a Dargan will cause you to instantly hijack it. By the way, did you know that Dargans use the clone flesh health type? Yeah, don't think about that one too much. You can shoot this drone above a Corpus Nullifier to instantly and permanently destroy their nullification bubble. Lavos makes your Railjack abilities function on a cooldown, which in turn makes them extremely spammable. Any emote done by Wukong will be mirrored by his Celestial Twin, meaning you can give your twin a handshake. They'll even take into account any Syndicate-specific handshakes you have access to. The Penta's physical magazine increases in size as you put on magazine-increasing mods. This works on all of the Penta variants, but Carmen Penta has the highest base magazine, so the effect is most pronounced on it. Whenever you bullet jump, you deal a small amount of blast damage and a radius around you. When sliding in air, enemies you connect with will be knocked down. This also deals a small amount of damage. Companions can actually use zip lines. If you equip a max rank redirection on Necros, his shield value will display 666. This works on Sevagoth too. Loki's irradiating disarm augment doesn't actually place a radiation proc on enemies. If you hold out a melee weapon while kidnapping a capture target, you can still block, with the center of the block being where you point your crosshair. When playing the Shazin as Octavia, you have the option to also play her mallet. Yorelli's forward roll on Marilina has a different animation depending on whether or not you actually hold forward. This seems to be purely visual and doesn't affect the actual distance traveled at all. Yorelli also can't be knocked off of Marilina like on a normal K-Drive. When you have a melee weapon equipped in manual mode, rolling while holding down block will cause you to roll a shorter distance. Titania's bullet jump goes 25% farther than other Warframes. Her roll does too. In a dojo duel, spectators can summon AoE archguns and kill the people fighting inside the arena. I find that this is the easiest with the Kuva Grattler. If you fully scan the Tomb Guardians in the Sands of Inaros quest, you can summon them in the Simulacrum. You can also use their splitting ability to break the normal enemy cap. On the Corpus Gas City tile set, you can hack some specific terminals in this room to activate this giant shock trap. Also on the Jupiter tile set, you can find two domestic drones named Daphnis and Chloe under this elevator. Certain hives and the hive sabotage mission type only appear during either the Patient Zero quest or when played as a Syndicate mission. The hives in question are the Stabilization Hive, the Lansing Hive, and the Security Hive. The Saturn VI Captura scene is the only place in the game where this skybox appears. Strangely enough, ship killer platforms in Grenier Railjack missions will target allied ships. 
If Loki uses his tactical menu ability while piloting the Railjack, the resulting decoy shows up as the pilot's chair instead of being Loki himself. You can use the tactical menu in Railjack to hack nearby turrets, both interior and exterior. You can detonate Kuva Brahma arrows mid-air by pressing the Alt-Fire button. Whenever Vauban's Bastille expires, it spawns a vortex that lasts for two seconds. However, if you hold 4 and manually turn the Bastille into a Vortex, it will always last the full duration, no matter how close the Bastille was to expiring. When enemies melee strike you while you're blocking, you have a chance to parry them. This causes them to be stunned and briefly opened up to finishers. There's even a mod called Parry that increases the odds of this happening. When playing the crashed Corpus ship tile set on Neptune, no tiles will spawn that allow you to see the sky. That's because if you could, you would see Jupiter. This also goes for the Grenier Sea Lab tile set on the node Mariana, as while the mission is on Earth, the sky would show Uranus. In Iron Wake, Clem and the test Moa Popcorn can be found in this little tent. You can ride around on in-mission domestic drones, as well as their cousins, like the Construction Drone and the Fuser Drone. Kuva Nukor makes enemy body parts grow, kind of like the Peculiar Growth mod. Oh yeah, Peculiar mods are a thing. Operators can destroy the magnetic bubbles that spawn in sabotage missions. On the infested ship tile set, you can find these terminals that spit out allied MOAs when hacked. Claw-type melee weapons have a unique finisher animation on Ancients, but no finisher animation at all for Chargers. Despite losing his hand in The Taking, Parvos Granum is shown with both of his hands in the later tenant, The Gemstone. Direct hits from the Daiku guarantee an impact proc. You can backflip to cancel the effects of Volt's speed. Wait, isn't this one a tooltip? Fuck! You can roll to cancel a melee attack pretty much anywhere in the animation. This is namely helpful for the rip and ride combo available on the ghoul saw, as you can cancel the slam attack at the end. Harrow's Thurible still works when killing ships with a railjack turret. When you begin throwing a glaive in air, you don't lose any height like with a normal aim glide. Wisp's Breach Surge has no range limit on the teleport to her reservoirs. Revenant's Reeve has no startup when used during Dance Macabre, allowing you to just straight up fly. You can actually find Little Duck on the map during the Prophet Taker boss fight. She'll periodically snipe at enemies, but to be honest, I've never really noticed it. Pet Moas will play an emote after every 5 kills or so as long as they have an emotive module. This means that having no module actually boosts their DPS a little bit. When wielding an arc gun outside of Arcwing, the amount of time you can aim glide for is massively reduced. Allied Spectres and on-call crewmates will kneel if you don't do anything for a while, I presume to prevent AFK farming. Umbra actually does this too. You can interact with these showers on Uranus. If only you'd do this in real life. If you subsume Loki's decoy and place it on another Warframe, the decoy's appearance will match the Warframe that you placed it on. Wisp's Agile animation set causes Warframes that have two forms, like Equinox and Zaku, to split into both forms during its idle animation. When you get this spawn tile on Uranus, waiting long enough lets you see this giant lank swim by. When you disarm a Shockwave MOA, they'll periodically start launching explosive barrels. When using Avara's Prowl on a Mergu, it drops a Kuwaka Spinal Claw for some reason. You can wall jump off of enemies, dealing a small amount of damage and refreshing your jump. The flat cannon skin for the Dragoon has a unique look for a shrapnel blast. Interacting with an object during File Rush allows you to continue moving while interacting with it. Despite not having access to its normal claw weapon, Sevagoth's shadow can still block during Sevagoth's passive. Rhino's roar counts as a universal faction damage buff, meaning that DOT status effects double dip with it. You can use Itzal's first ability on the Deimos Jugulus, which completely breaks them. Shout out to Silver Lighter for discovering this. Hitting a gas proc with the sickening pulse helmet ability more than once will set the status's damage to zero. The pause menu can be affected by slows, namely the time slow in Captura. You can still slide during a roll, allowing for some really visually confusing dodges. If you look in a direction and then quickly look down and press melee, you'll perform a ground slam in the direction you were previously looking. You can find rare bypass keys during disruption missions that allow you to dispel one tower's negative effect per round. Umbra is immune to the magnetic blast from Eidolons, so long as you're in operator mode. Titania's Entangle is the only slow in the game that doesn't slow down enemy animations. T Titania? I fuck it, I don't care. You can cancel the Catabolist's reload with a roll, allowing you to spam the grenade. On the Quats and Quartac, you can start firing from the hip and then ADS to zoom in and still be in full auto. If you've replaced your Railjack tactical ability at the Helminth, then the tactical menu will simply display No Ability Found. You can see a giant Void Snake through this shard in the Deimos Isolation Vault. You can also occasionally see them when loading into a Railjack mission. The Vent Kids have special dialogue if you enter their clubhouse as Yureli. 
Plenty brought the Wave Rider. I know she got Miralina, but if you ever want to try her with a regular board like one of mine, store's always open. Revenant is immune to the magnetic water present on the plains of Eidolon. When mining on the Orb Vallis, Hesperon spawns more frequently around the Temple of Prophet. Placing the Dominion Heavy Blade skin on the Xenistar makes it absolutely massive. When using the regular Chroma skin on Chroma Prime, Effigy's wings will still be their prime counterpart. There's a weird floating container of Thermal Sludge out north of Reflector Control. Despite being conservation targets, Velocipods aren't highlighted by the Trank Rifle and don't cause it to beep either. Nova's Molecular Prime affects conservation targets. Arcane Seeker on kit guns will target enemy heads, meaning you can use it to rack up galvanized scope stacks super quickly. Senta turrets in the Kuva Fortress can be used to build a combo with melees while they are invincible. This is especially useful for certain ribbon challenges. On the Orb Vallis, pets will periodically shiver. Banshee's silence stops enemies from using loads of special abilities. There are too many interactions to talk about in a video this fast paced, so I'll leave a list on screen now if you want to pause and take a look. Toxic Lash on Saren will have its proc damage boosted by any toxin mods present on your weapon, even if they're combined into other damage types like Viral or Gas. Tenet Envoy's tracking rocket sound changes based on whether or not you've got your crosshair over an enemy. You can use an art gun while carrying Volt Shield. If you press Saku's 4 right before you hit the ground during a slam, you'll bounce off the ground and get launched a considerable distance. If you down a Litcher Sister three times without using the Parazon on them, they'll simply leave the mission without leveling up. The Arc Line ability on Itzal uses the energy color of your equipped Warframe as opposed to the energy color of the Arc Wing itself. The icon that appears when an Iotan star drops actually signals what kind of star it is. If the star in the icon is small, it's a cyan, while if it's large, it's an amber. If you press up against an object while using Volt Speed, you'll still gain momentum, allowing you to yeet yourself pretty far. The Tenet Spirix has a unique reload animation when used with a glaive. You can still emote while in an Arcwing or Titania's Razor Wing. If you subsume Radial Blind onto a Prime Warframe, you'll use Ascana Prime when casting the ability. Because they boost affinity sharing range, Phosphors can be used to massively increase the range of both Trinity's Bless and Harrow's Covenant. Vazarin's Mending Unity passive can also do this, and the two actually stack. Barrow has unique dialogue based on whether or not you are a regular Warframe, a Prime Warframe, Inaros, or Inaros Prime. Until next time. My lord, you find me, as always, in my hour of need. I, Barrow Kitir, stand ready to accompany you on another adventure of mutual benefit. But what's even more interesting is that, as an Aros Prime, you have access to a secret mission purchasable from Barrow called Void Raider. In this mission, you have to play an Aros Prime and defend Barrow from 10 waves of Nightwatch Grenier in the Void. You get a different reward each time you complete the mission, up to a point, as well as one Desert Skate Spectre. By interacting with this Solaris in Fortuna, you can replay the opening cutscene. Saren, Korra, and Oberon will all have their HP set to 1337 if you place on all Umbral mods and have a maxed Umbral Vitality. When hacking a Corpus Terminal, you can left-click to go clockwise like normal, but you can also right-click to go counterclockwise. I don't know what the controller binds are, but it should be the same idea on console. You can also press the gear button while hacking to instantly use a Cypher. Zephyr's Jetstream Augment is the only way to boost the projectile speed of both the Strofa and the Tenet Agendas. If you enter the Index from the Dojo Navigation Room, you'll always get the Corpus Snowbase map. AI Railjack pilots will actually try to target radiators and reactor weak points for you. I say try because they don't seem to have proper line of sight detection and often just try to shoot the important thing from the opposite side. If you extract from a rescue mission while the hostage is bleeding out, you'll still win. You can roll through pretty much every knockdown in the game. Gunner slams, laser barricades, death orbs, and so on. You can change the ending of a reactor sabotage mission based on what you do with the coolant and fuel cells. You can place either the fuel cell in the reactor, the coolant cell in the reactor, or the fuel cell in the coolant system for different objectives and mission hazards. This is pretty cool, so I won't spoil exactly what happens, just know that the results are different between Corpus and Grenier sabotage missions. 
In the Enrichment Labs on the Orb Vallis, hacking this terminal has a chance to free the sentient battleist trapped in the glass. This seems to be exceptionally rare, though. The Amalgam Ripka's mod's 100% increased gore chance actually applies to all of your weapons, not just the Ripka's. The Alt Fire Dart on Buzzlock has infinite punch through, meaning that when combined with Avara's Navigator, you can use it to see outside the map. If you press melee while wall latching, you'll do a wall attack. Despite being conservation targets, Velocipods hit by sleep abilities won't be capturable while asleep. You can still ride them, but you won't be able to move at all, because they're asleep. Sevagoth's Gloom actually stacks with other sources of slow, like Nova's Molecular Prime or Xenoric's Temporal Blast. With enough slows in play, enemies can become functionally frozen. In a relay, if you stand in one of these spots as Octavia and use a Narta emote, you'll play your currently equipped song. Despite being immune to almost all forms of crowd control, capture targets can still be grappled by Kubro finishers. In Jupiter Sabotage, during the reactor meltdown sequence, the enemies that come to stop the meltdown are just regular nullifiers as opposed to the Vapus ones. Grenier Regulator drones are immune to status effects for some reason. In this Grenier Spy Vault, being spotted by a scanner will actually release the links in the middle of the room, starting an impromptu mini-boss fight. You can interact with your docked ship in a relay to go back to your orbiter. There's a console in Iron Wake that lets you do this too. Corpus Machinists use the Ambassador as a flamethrower, as opposed to the assault rifle form usable by players. If you only have one weapon equipped on Wukong, then both you and your twin will be able to use that weapon at the same time. When playing Zephyr, tornadoes will follow your crosshair if you aim down sight and point near them. If you have any form of holster reload on the Hema, not only will it still drain your health when stowed, but it will also deal way more damage than normal. Ballistica Prime's passive, which turns killed enemies into allied ghosts, still works on conservation targets. You know, I should probably stop abusing Verminx for this series. The Scavenge mod for Kubros still shows the classic Corpus Locker design. The Simon Says Puzzle Room on Lua spawns a special rare container when completed, which has a small chance to drop a fully built Forma. If you touch an Auric in Death Orb as a Prime Warframe, you get a free 250 energy. This one's not too obscure, but it's still good to know. Baruch's animation sets practice trigger discipline, which is a nice thematic touch. If you're riding a K-Drive during an Eidolon's energy spike, you'll be completely immune to the magnetic proc from its blast. You can replay the Hun Hao boss fight from the Octavia's Anthem quest by interacting with this panel in Cephalon Suda's relay room. You can silence the firing sound of a gunblade by using either Banshee's passive or Loki's hushed invisibility augment. If you press Alt-Fire while using Artemis Bow, you'll instantly fire whatever arrow you have currently selected with Quiver. You can do heavy attacks while sliding, and you can also slide while in the air. If you combine the two techniques, you can actually perform heavy attacks in the air, which can lead to some really weird stuff. Emisha's ultimate, Vengeful Rush, grants you energy even when you crash into a surface. If you approach your pet in your orbiter and press Interact, you'll pet them. You can do this with Moas too, but strangely enough, not Hounds. If an enemy is ragdolled and stuck in a position where they can't get up, they'll normally just die, but occasionally, they can just transcend the laws of physics instead. If you enter the Helminth room as Nidus, he will apply his full mutation look. You can control a lot of strange things with Navigator, but I think the weirdest stuff falls to fishing equipment. You can control fishing spears, which snap back to you after a brief period, as well as dies and bait, which can be flown around at abysmal speeds. So, uh, as I was working on this video, Original Wicked Fun uploaded a video on this. God fucking damn it. If you shoot an enemy's grenade, it will instantly explode and deal damage to enemies instead of allies. Grendel can also eat these grenades, which has the same effects as shooting them. Sahasaku Rose can use Dig during entry cutscenes, which can be kinda nice as they often dig up energy orbs. All companions are actually active during these cutscenes, but the Sahasa provides the most obvious benefit. Resources from Deimos are worth double secretions when fed to the Helminth, being 60% instead of 30% if they're at max desirability. When used in Arcwing, Corvus behaves like a giant catch moon, while on land it behaves more like a typical shotgun. On the bright side, Corvus Prime doesn't have this disparity, behaving like catch moon regardless of where it's used. Unlike most sources of energy, the energy well in this room on Lua still grants energy while channeled abilities are active. The Spore Culture resource container has no collision for some reason. 
In missions that possess weapon type restrictions, Wukong's Celestial Twin will still be equipped with all three weapons, so long as they were all in your loadout. Garuda's talents aren't considered a proper melee weapon by missions that require them, meaning that melee-only sorties as well as mastery rank tests can't be played with them. They also don't work in missions that restrict you to a weapon type that isn't melee, wherein they disappear entirely. If you use your switch weapon button while on the forward artillery and railjack, you'll swap to a regular turret. Also, as a fun fact, the official name of the forward artillery gun is the Tunguska Cannon. Enemies that are knocked down or lifted count towards the bonus damage of Condition Overload and similar mods. The Nucor's microwave effect mentioned earlier in this series counts towards CO as well. If Equinox uses negative power strength, her pacify ability will actually increase the damage of nearby enemies. Gunblades don't break Ivara's prowl, despite their noise level being considered alarming. The power donation aura actually applies to Necromex, boosting their ability strength by 30% for each one in the lobby. Enemies on the plains of Eidolon gradually go up in level the further away you are from the Cetus Gate. Some elite crewmates have an ability that allows them to heal nearby allies for 500 HP over 10 seconds upon getting a kill. What makes this interesting is that this ability can heal things you wouldn't expect it to, such as defense objectives, hijack objectives, and even Necromex. On the topic of healing Necromex, the Vizier Predacite's Iatric Mycelium ability can also heal them, which is kinda nice. The mods Target Cracker and Split Chamber actually depict the same scene from two different angles. If you enable friendly fire in the simulacrum and then enter your operator form, Umbra will actually attack you. Lots of allied AI behave like this, including Nidus' maggots, Wukong's twin, Caliban's homies, and most companions, among others. Damage buffs like Roar and Volt's passive can boost the damage of fishing spears, which lets you not have to swap between spear types when fishing on the plains. The Captura free cam can pick up Wisp's reservoir buffs, though they don't do anything. Blind Justice is the only stance in the game to change almost all weapon animations. In particular, it changes the Nakana's animations for blocking, front and back finishers, wall attacks, and even the idle animation. Infested Leapers take significantly more damage while leaping, as well as during the leap's windup. You can use Ballistica Prime's passive to scan Feral Kavats twice. Scan the Kavat, kill it with a fully charged shot, and then scan the ghost again before it disappears. Even as a ghost, the Kavat can still drop genetic code, which can be helpful if you're trying to get a domesticated one. If Kuva Jesters jump on you, their attacks make squeaking noises. If placed on Limbo, Aqua Blades can damage enemies outside the Rift while Limbo is in the Rift. This works in reverse as well, where if Limbo's in the normal world, enemies in the Rift will still take damage. Unlocking a ribbon shows a message saying plus XP, despite the fact that Warframe almost always refers to experience points as affinity. You can crouch while in Wukong's Cloudwalker, which can help you get around certain obstacles. The Spherex is apparently used as a multi-tool by the Corpus, as they can be seen using it to repair various machines during certain idle animations. If you aim at a beast companion, it will crouch out of the way of your crosshair. If you're crouch walking, said companion will also crawl around with you. Casting Garuda's Seeking Talons while holding Aim Glide grants you a considerable boost in height. If you continue holding Aim Glide after the ability ends, you'll be considerably less glidey. If you add an item to your wishlist, you can purchase said item while you're in missions or social spaces. Strangely enough, there's also one specific Solaris debt that you can wishlist, but I expect that to get patched. Typically, a Warframe Spectre's power strength is simply 100%, or base power strength. However, because Nidus' strength increases as he levels up, his Spectre's power strength is accordingly increased to 115%. The ability preview videos for Mesa's Shooting Gallery and Peacemaker take place in the old Corpus ship tileset, which was replaced in the Deadlock Protocol update. Allied MOAs equipped with emotive modules can mirror certain emotes, those being Agree, Disagree, Bow slash Deep Bow, and Wave. They'll also dance if the player performs certain Nardas, and these MOA emotes are unique to each emotive module. Is that the fucking default dance? If you lose to the Grustrag 3, any clan emblems you have equipped on your Warframe will automatically turn into the Grenier emblem. This goes away when you craft and claim the bolt release from the foundry. If you ever get stuck in a weird spot or end up outside the map, typing slash unstuck in chat will teleport you to a regular position. This one's more for new players, as I imagine most vets have used this command dozens if not hundreds of times. The Vias Prime Diadem and Mask are in opposite equipment slots, as in, the Diadem is in the Face Accessory slot, and the Mask is in the Eye Accessory slot. These Corpus Techs in the Ambulus boss fight appear to have a set level of 20. They also play a unique animation that is completely misaligned. 
If you have the Deimos wildlife fully scanned in your codex, you can spawn and capture them in this simulacrum. You don't get any rewards for doing this, but I still find it kind of weird. Various K-Drive races on the Cambian Drift actually drop unique infested K-Drive parts. I'll show on screen now which races drop what parts, implying I don't get lazy or forget. You can cancel melee combos into other melee combos, which can be helpful for avoiding lengthy finishing moves at the end of combo strings. You can also use this to turn Blind Justice into fucking Blender Justice. In addition to their tiny heads, MOA battery packs also count as a weak spot. Shooting the backpack won't proc headshot-based buffs, though. Strangely enough, Frontier Regulators can't go above level 5. What the fuck? You can put remote observers onto your companions to create a shitty pet GoPro. If you enter operator form while Wisp is in air, your frame and companion will both remain invisible when she touches the ground again. You can easily cheese the endurance stripped puzzle by jumping above the ring and dropping your warframe into the middle. There's also a brief window of time before the challenge activates where this can be done while standing in the ring itself. If you kill no enemies for 15 minutes, a timer will start which auto-fails the mission if no enemies are killed within one minute of the timer's activation. If you try to capture a target while riding Marilina, then Marilina will capture the target instead of Urelli. Saren's Toxic Lash can have its toxin procs triggered by the explosion from Acid Shells, Thermomagnetic Shells, and Vulcan Blitz. These toxin procs can then reproc the explosion from the original mod, creating some fun chain reactions. Garuda's Dread Mirror normally has some travel time if you look around, but will snap instantly if you're aiming down sight. If you clip out of the Pragasa throne room scene, you can find an Excalibur just chilling out under the main structure. If you purchase the Enter Nihil's... How do you pronounce this? Uh... If you buy the Enter Nihil's Jar item, but you've already fought him in the past, then you'll get a random Riven mod upon beating him, as opposed to getting another Vitrica blueprint. The whammy effect on the Shazen applies to the Clem rating section at the end of songs as well. If you climb up the elevator shaft at the start of some Jupiter missions, you'll find a secret room at the top. Nothing special inside, but I don't know, I just thought it was weird and or obscure. Warden enemies in rescue missions take 16 times more damage from stealth attacks. On the topic of rescue missions, the quality of Spectre Blueprint you receive at the end is based on three criteria, being rescuing the hostage, not setting off any alarms while rescuing the hostage, and killing all wardens present in the prison area. The more of these you complete, the higher the quality of the Spectre. Mission level will also contribute to the base quality of the Spectre Blueprint for any given mission. Enemies stuck in Garuda's Blood Altar can be used to farm combo count, which is especially nice now that Prime Talons have baller crit stats. Because so many people have mentioned it before, I also want to point out that Kuva Scythons and Down Bursa and Ambulus units can be used for the farming of the combo count too. I don't doubt that there are more ways, but I really don't want to talk about this anymore. Certain rooms in Isolation Vaults on Deimos contain secret puzzles, which, when solved, will reveal a door containing a bunch of Entrati containers. Even more interesting, however, are these purple containers, which drop a Captura scene when destroyed. These scenes are pulled from a unique pool, separate from those that Grandmother sells. Ivara's Artemis bow has pinpoint accuracy, meaning that the accuracy debuff from Heavy Caliber has no effect on it. This is not the case if you use the Concentrated Arrow Augment, however. Because Occucor's tendrils only reset when the weapon is reloaded, the mod Eject Magazine as well as the Synth Mod Set bonus can be used to refill the mag without resetting the tendrils. If Grendel eats a volatile runner with Feast, the runner will still explode in his stomach, which often triggers a stagger. Why though? Relic buffs to Warframe abilities, being plus 100% to range and strength, can actually be prolonged past the normal buff duration. Abilities with durations that haven't ended when the buff expires will obviously retain the effect, but channeled abilities will also maintain the buff so long as they are not dispelled and recast. Wisp's motes will also maintain the buff, and Zaku can massively prolong the buff past its expiry by using the Vast on time. Helium barrels in the Corpus Gas City will clip right through Warframes, but can be pushed around by most weapons. Some weapons, however, like beams, throwables, and crossbows, appear to have no effect at all. There is Grenier text on the barrel of the Kuva Zar that, when translated, simply says, Boom. There are a ton of easter eggs like this across many factions and languages, but I don't have time to cover them all in this video. You can find the Soma Chord versions of three New War music tracks, being Foreign Armor, Sun Killer, and Hybrid Abominations, in set locations on the post-quest open worlds. You can actually skip the entire first phase of Vahex boss fight by simply running to the next room and ignoring him. 
Eventually you'll reach the pipe you're supposed to slide down, and the second phase of the fight will begin as normal. Enemies in Tier 4 Void missions deal 200% more damage than they normally would at their current level. This also extends to enemies that spawn conditionally, like Acolytes and Assassins. By the way, when I say Tier 4 Void, I mean anything branching off of Sedna. When playing the quests The Second Dream and The War Within, the landing craft segment of the Orbiter uses its old look, while the rest of the Orbiter uses the modern look. The damage reduction from Mesa's Shatter Shield doesn't protect her from AoE attacks or melee damage. If you double tap Crouch while riding a K-Drive, you'll perform a ground slam that damages enemies and knocks them down. I know this is pointed out in the Wave Rider, but nobody does that quest. Cephalon Sark, who serves as the announcer for the Index, was actually first featured in the Conclave game mode as Cephalon Capture. He's still there, along with two other unique Cephalons named Vol and Apnar. When killing an enemy under the effects of Energy Vampire, they'll actually give you a slightly random amount of energy, ranging from roughly 98% to 102% of the regular amount. The Aqua Blades interaction on Limbo I mentioned in the last video actually extends to all abilities, so basically any ability on Limbo or allies will damage enemies regardless if they're rifted or not. A lot of people also told me to mention that the rift doesn't affect the operator, which sure is weird, but is that obscure? Is it not normal to press 5 when you're playing Limbo? I'm getting distracted, moving on. Vitus Essence and Steel Essence drops despawn if not picked up after 5 minutes, so if you're waiting for a Smita buff or something, make sure to keep your eye on the clock. On-call crewmates appear to bypass lots of enemy damage reduction. Some examples include the DR present on Liches and Sisters, as well as bosses like Mutilus Dalad V. You can shoot through Nova's portals, causing projectiles to be instantly teleported to the end of said portal. Allegedly, enemy grenades that go through portals also become allied grenades, but I have no idea how I would test that. Equinox's fused idol isn't equipable on other Warframes, and also can't be seen in normal missions. It's basically exclusive to Equinox and only usable in social spaces. Because Buzzlock's alt fire has infinite punch through, it can shoot into Frost's bubble. Fluctus can do this too, but strangely enough, Zenith's semi auto mode can't. If you're playing on Earth and you encounter the Toxin Mixer tile, you can find a dead Grenier with a backpack and some other supplies in this broken pipe. He's also missing his face and has a manic mask laying next to him despite seemingly being a butcher. Zephyr Prime's arm feathers expand outward while she's airborne, and shrink back down to normal when she touches the ground again. When reaching a melee combo count of two times or more, the Acanthus Prime shoulders will shoot out beams of light, and the Spritsail Prime shoulders will cause localized rain splashing effects. There's an account named Shop who has most major items wishlisted, meaning that you can more easily buy them when away from your orbiter as mentioned in the last video. To view this account, type slash profile shop in chat and then navigate to the wishlist tab. From Spawn in Iron Wake, if you go to the left and enter this obscured event, you'll encounter the one and only Grokdrul Ghoul. He doesn't really do anything, but I don't know, I just think he's a cool guy. If you interact with the Syndicate's console in your orbiter, you'll be given an option to visit them, which can be used to fast travel to various Syndicates as well as characters like Teshin and Samaris. The projectiles fired by Velocitus will ricochet off surfaces in Arcwing, but possess no such trait when used on the ground. In addition to void damage, electric and magnetic damage can also pop the bubbles that appear in sabotage missions. There is an extremely small chance upon completing a capture mission to receive a gear item called the Omni Ammo Box. When used, the ammo box restores ammo to all of your weapons and is then consumed. If you complete a quest that rewards a Warframe blueprint, but you already own said Warframe, then in addition to the blueprint, you'll also be given a random Riven mod. If you load into the Orb Valis on the Steel Path and then start the fight for the Exploiter Orb, she'll still be at level 50. The 150% increase to health, armor, and shields from being on Steel Path still applies to her though. You can input a slide attack during a melee attack to get a decent boost in range. This is admittedly kinda tricky with high attack speed though. Manually detonating Wolf Sledge while it's in air launches enemies really far for some reason. During the Patient Zero quest, you play a reactor sabotage mission on Eris, despite the fact that there normally are no reactor sabotage missions on Eris. There isn't even a tile for such thing in its tile set, meaning that a tile from the old Corpus ship tile set is used instead. Scanning an unalerted enemy counts as a stealth scan, granting double scan progress and also granting more affinity, which in turn leads to more Samaris rep. Branching off of this, Baruch's lull resets the alert level of enemies, meaning that it can be used to stealth scan enemies that have previously spotted you. This effect also allows you to get stealth kill affinity bonuses off of enemies that have previously seen you, or to prevent you from losing it. If you're using the safeguard augment on Neja, you can sprint and then look behind you to cast warding halo on your sentinel. Pressing melee while a glaive is in flight will immediately summon it back to you. This works with Cedo's alt fire as well, albeit inconsistently. 
You can actually find a wide array of leaderboards for various missions and events by going to the pause menu in the orbiter, then going to profile, then leaderboards. You can find weekly ones for various endless missions and minigames, daily ones for K-Drive races, although strangely only for the Valus, and archived event leaderboards. There's also this one labeled Dedicated Servers, but I honestly have no idea what any of this means. Also, who the fuck got 316 points in Happy Zephyr this week? Are you okay, my gamer? The slam effect from Exodia Hunt opens affected enemies up to finishers, making it a good pick for Dagger and Hammer Zaws. Prime Warframes can't use Exalted Weapon skins that are built on the base, non-primed model, although they can still use Deluxe skin models. This is even worse for Excalibur though, who can only use the Exalted Blade from the Zato Deluxe if he is using the skin itself. DE, please change this, I want to use Tenogen Claws on Garuda Prime. Multi-shot mods mess with accuracy accolades, allowing you to hit absurd accuracy percentages. When using Voracious Metastasis on Hildred, it converts the amount of shields consumed from casting into energy for teammates, allowing for absurd energy regen for nearby allies. If Golden Instinct is placed on Lavos, its cooldown can be reduced by using Transmutation Probe. If you enter Exalted Shadow while Gloom is active on Sevagoth, then Sevagoth will keep Gloom active, but still lose energy. However, if you have Arcane Energize on the Shadow, then the energy picked up will also be given to Sevagoth provided you're close enough. Tenno Shields are a special health class exclusive to players, which have a 25% damage reduction to all damage types. Strangely enough, this makes it Void Damage's only bad matchup. Speaking of Void, it also isn't affected by enemy physical or elemental enhancement modifiers and sorties. Rolling actually provides a 75% damage reduction during the animation. It can also be used to shake off certain effects like Mutilist Moa Swarms, Latchers, and even Malice's Magnetize. You also can't be grappled by Ancients or Scorpions during a roll, as these are considered a knockdown. In the Pit Monster Room, which has a chance to spawn in Deimos Isolation Vaults, you can perform an Easter Egg wherein you feed this Sarlacc looking ass and damage various tumors. Upon completing the easter egg, you can drop down into the Sarlax Maw, wherein you encounter a unique enemy variant, the Jugulus Rex. This enemy spawns nowhere else on Deimos, and instead of spitting out glaives, it possesses rapid health regeneration, which can be slowed by destroying weak spots on its neck. In addition to boosting weapon damage, Roar also boosts the damage of Warframe abilities. If you miss a throw when fishing on either the Plains or Valis, you have a small chance to catch a Boot or Crewman's Boot, respectively, which is accompanied by a fun jingle. Voban's Overdriver Mine can attach to his Tesla Nervos, which boosts their damage and also gives them a new look. By the way, if Voban is affected by Overdriver, it also boosts the damage of his Flechette Orbs, for those who don't know. The damage from Ash's Blade Storm counts as finisher damage, meaning that if an enemy is killed by a clone directly and not by a resulting slash proc, then they can proc finisher-based arcanes like Ultimatum and Trickery. This also means that Blade Storm's damage can be boosted by Savage Silence and Radiant Finish, which is kinda super busted. Oh, by the way, Parazon finishers can also trigger finisher arcanes. If you have Temporal Anchor active on Protea, you can hold your ultimate down to cancel the rewind as well as the explosion and the energy restoration. Wait, this is a tip on the ability page, isn't it? Eh, not like people read those anyways. Speaking of which, another interesting thing about those tips is that if you have Provoke active on Dayform Equinox and you switch to Nightform, the boosted power strength will be added to the Metamorphosis buff you receive in Nightform. If you trip all three Data Vault Alarms in a Spy Mission, then you'll have to play out an Exterminate mission at the end, kinda like the dreaded Change of Plans from Capture Missions, although this time avoidable. In the Ballroom Simulacrum scene, you can find this button to the right of the arsenal labeled Reset Suit. If pressed, the button dispels all active Warframe abilities, although buffs from things like Companions, Arcanes, and Galvanize mods will still be present. Mirage's Sleight of Hand ability will actually hack nearby enemy equipment. Namely, it hacks laser barricades, shock and gas traps, and the various turrets found on the Valis, Plains, and Kuva Fortress. Arc traps too, although strangely enough, not sensor bars. If you go to the pause menu, and then go to options, and then select the accessibility tab, you'll see a customize HUD color under the interface section. If you click on an element to customize, you'll then be able to choose colors from any palette you own, as well as a special palette called accessibility. Neat thing is, if you favorite a color from the accessibility palette, you can use it later for fashion purposes. During Uranus Sabotage, if you get the Manic Bombard variation, you can actually complete the mission without ever fighting him. Up above the main chamber will be a catwalk with two canisters. Grab these and deposit them in receptacles on each side of the main chamber, hacking their corresponding consoles as you go. Once you've deposited both canisters and hacked both consoles, the Bombard will be poisoned and you'll be free to extract. Be careful about the sensor though, if it spots you, you'll be forced to fight the Bombard regardless of how close you were to poisoning him. While Shadows of the Dead is active, Necros can press 4 to heal his currently alive shadows back to full health, while also playing a shorter version of the regular casting animation if none of them have died yet. 
Wait, this is an ability menu tip too, isn't it? Fuck, how many of these have been ability menu tips? Pretty much every Prime Warframe has special effects on their abilities that add some extra visual flair with no real gameplay benefit. Examples include a lightning bolt coming from the sky when using Volt Prime Shock, extra golden icicles that spawn when using Frost Prime's Ice Wave, and Loki Prime's decoy using a Lex Prime instead of a Lado. If you have the Glyph Prism gear item bound to a hotkey, then you can press said hotkey to use the item while in your orbiter. Gauss can actually run on all water, not just the water and coolant present on the plains in Valis. This includes water in the Grenier Sea Lab and Earth Forest tile sets among others. Also, when it's night on the plains, running on the water as Gauss avoids the magnetic proc. On the Earth Forest tile set, in this room with the turbines, you can shoot these two boxes to disable the fans, allowing you to walk through unimpeded. If you pull up the map in Captura, you can see the Captura camera as a blue ally dot, which follows you around as you move. In Fortuna, there are a handful of elevators that can be used to access various areas. They're not super practical, but at least it gives us a logical way for Ticker to be up here. The Opera Multishot buff from Octavia's Metronome boosts scanner speed. You can scan Wukong's Celestial Twin, despite it having no codex entry. You can also scan Necros' Shadows of the Dead. In the Codex, conservation animals have an alignment of either Predator or Prey. Vovan's Flechette Orb counts towards accuracy accolades and is treated as if it never misses, allowing your accuracy percentage to get ridiculously high. On Lua, you can find these yellow rifts that give you various buffs if you wall latch them for a second or two. I'll show on screen now what each buff is and what it does. The Tether Grenades augment for the Penta can attach itself to Arctic Eximus bubbles, which can pull them around and even cause them to just fly straight up. This only works if their overguard has been removed though. Speaking of the Penta, the Napalm Grenades augment damages enemies regardless of the rift status of either the enemies or Limbo himself. If an NPC spoke during Protea's Temporal Anchor, then their dialogue will be sped up and reversed when time gets rewound at the end. Excellent work. We'll interrogate the captive back at base. Your part is done here, Tenno. As Limbo, you can hold down your 1 to evict all enemies currently in the Rift. If you get out of bounds in the Drifter's Camp Captura scene, you can find this leftover development room. During the New War quest, the Drifter can play the Shazen, however in normal gameplay, the emote is grayed out when using them. Nataruk has no headshot multiplier on charged or perfect shots, meaning that headshots deal no additional damage. The quick shot still does have a headshot multiplier though. During Alad V's boss fight, you can actually CC Zanuka and prevent her from reviving Alad when he's down, which will lead to Alad bleeding out and you completing the fight without ever killing Zanuka. When playing Mirage, you can maintain a buff from Eclipse by becoming invisible, meaning that you won't lose said buff if you go from a dark to a light place or vice versa. This is apparently called snapshotting and applies to several mechanics, like the relic buff prolonging I mentioned in the last episode. Marilina can sit on top of Frost's snow globe. If you hit 0% armor integrity in the infested salvage mission type, the infested will actually start speaking to you. Within Warframe, there exists a promotional skin called the Nvidia Brayton, which was never released for multiple reasons. Despite this, the skin is actually still chat linkable, on PC at least. Ash can use the Fatal Teleport augment on infested hives, which shrinks them down and rotates them, I guess? Because the Jugulus Rex has innate health regen, it can stay alive autonomously when revived as a shadow by Necros. Branching off of this, Marilina can be used to skip the finisher animation on Thralls entirely. Presumably Hounds too, but I'm not generating a sister and a Lich, I don't care enough about my content for that shit. Volt Speed can be used to speed up the ethereal kids on the Zeraman. The drums on stage in the Zeraman Auditorium Room make noise when you attack them. Several weapons actually have special reload animations when used with a glaive, separate from the normal ones. The Piranha and Euphona Prime share one, wherein the gun is spun a few extra times during the reload. Ballistica and the Zundi Pistol Skin have a reload where the magazine is flicked out of the side of the weapon. Kit guns with a magazine on the bottom will drop the magazine straight down with no spinning, and Azima will pop the magazine up before reloading. 
If you try to spawn a Dargan in Captura, they often just get stuck in the ground. This can normally be fixed by jumping. Resource nodes in the plains actually increase the amount of resources they drop if you play higher level bounties. The speed at which an Incarnan weapon switches forms is actually affected by reload speed modifiers. When fighting the Ethereal Angel, you can actually stack the golden bubbles on top of each other to further boost the damage they give you. Also, standing in these bubbles gives you added heat damage and protects you from the Angel's attacks, for those who don't know. You, uh, can also just use Void Strike to skip the orb thing entirely, but that's neither here nor there. As a Gyre, you can press 1 while an Arc Sphere is in flight to immediately detonate it. Okay, this one is less of a gameplay thing and more of just a fun detail. For a long time now, Mag has had an alt helm called the Mag Gauss Helmet. When Gauss was revealed, people joked about the helmet's name, and as such, DE named Gauss's alt helm the Gauss Mag Helmet. Abilities that absorb damage after being cast, like Iron Skin and Warding Halo, can actually absorb the damage from Profit Taker and Exploiter's Nuke, adding it to their health. These attacks can also be survived via shield gating, which I find kinda funny. You can interrupt a Void Sling mid-flight by firing your amp, allowing you to quickly correct yourself if you overshoot something. You can also initiate a Void Sling by holding space while already in air. If you're quick enough, you can actually lock yourself out of your own Dorma Zone, which requires a reload to get back in. Blueprint made a fun comic series based on this concept, so I'll link their Twitter below if you want to check it out. In the Dorma Zone, if you approach this door as the Drifter, then a pulsing monochromatic effect will emanate from the door, along with a set of dual Nakanas and music from the Duviri Paradox reveal trailer. Eximus units actually have unique voice lines now. Blueprint just so happened to make a video about this, so I'll leave that in the description too if you're interested. The Turbulence Augment on Zephyr also speeds up Fishing Spears. The Vengeful Impact Ephemera actually changes to adopt the look of Iron Skin when used on Rhino. If you have a combo counter of two times or more, the Citadella Prime Cyandana will possess some cool effects. By the way, if you have a weapon that starts with a two times combo count, either passively like Fragor or using the Corrupt Charge mod, then combo counter based effects will activate when in the arsenal. When Xenorix's Inner Might passive is off cooldown, this little orb will start orbiting your Warframe, adopting the frame's energy color. The portrait of your parents in the dorm zone actually adopts some of your operator's suit colors. The colors in question are the primary suit color, secondary suit color, and hair color. In the main tent at the hillside ruins base on the plains, you can interact with this console to cause various pistons to pound the ground before highlighting an area on the center map. One of the explosive drones on the ceilings will then be dispatched to the highlighted area, detonating and revealing some resources as well as a sentient bone. This can be done multiple times, revealing a total of three dig sites. You can also destroy the explosive drones both in flight and while they're on the ceiling, so be careful. Nightwatch Grenier enemies have no Eximus units. You can skip a lot of dialogue by quickly opening and closing Nightwave in the pause menu. This namely works on bounty intro dialogue and the dialogue before a Void Angel fight, but applies to almost all dialogue and is actually a speedrunning strat referred to as Nora Skip. If you deploy a restore pad on a domestic drone while on top of it, then the drone will actually drag around the pad too. This works for the domestic drone's cousins as well. The orb from Alternox's Altfire sticks to geometry, and will get moved around if the geometry it's stuck to moves. This is easiest to demonstrate with a door. As an operator, you can use Void Mode to negate fall damage. The Tonkor wielded by Elite Shield Lancers and Nightwatch Reavers has an arming distance mechanic, meaning that if you're close enough to them, their grenades won't actually explode. Let's go. Weird and obscure stuff. You can press the ability buttons, 1 to 4 on PC, to instantly build turrets in Void Armageddon. Maggot decorations can be killed in Captura if friendly fire is enabled. If a Kuva Cloud touches a piece of Gara's Mass Vitrify, the glass section will shatter instantly. The first mission you complete after Daily Reset will grant a bonus of double credits. This is called the Daily First Win bonus and doesn't apply to credit gains that are mission rewards like credit caches and index payouts. If Korra's 3 is replaced via the Helminth, then Venari's icon in the arsenal will instead turn into the ability it's been swapped for. This also works for Exalted Weapons. In the Keybind section of the Settings menu, you can find two normally unbound controls for Railjack called Bank Left and Bank Right. If you decide to bind these, you can use the bound keys to roll left and right, which doesn't serve much practical purpose but does contribute to immersion. In this Auric and Challenge room, shooting the floating platforms will cause them to shake. During the Gift of the Lotus alerts for 2022, all missions had the Void Skybox regardless of where on the star chart they took place. I only have screenshots for this one, so sorry about that. Various, mostly AoE weapons can destroy the shields of the Special Duty Coil Drive while it's invincible. If this happens, the shields will never naturally regenerate. 
For those who don't know, shield gating provides two different amounts of invincibility depending on the shield charge status before they broke. If the shield had fully recharged at some point before being broken, 1.33 seconds of invincibility is granted, but if the shield breaks before reaching full again after previously being broken, it will only grant 0.33 seconds of invincibility. When you have the full 1.33 seconds of shield gate ready, your shield bar will glow with an energized effect to let you know. The freezing ground in the void in Lua tile sets doesn't affect Yureli if she's on Marilina. If you roll through the fire blast of an Arson Eximus, you both won't be knocked down and won't take the heat proc they normally hand you. Transferring to a Necromech, Operator, or K-Drive while holding the Trank Rifle doesn't remove the minimap markers for animal call points. The Parallax ships in the Zeraman have Warframe entrance ports on the bottom, which honestly makes zero fucking sense. The Railjack, its turrets, and hijacked crew ships can be piloted by Operators and Drifters. On top of this, kills with Railjack turrets while using an Operator will grant Amp Affinity instead of Plexus Affinity. DE please don't patch this, people already blame me for the Drifter handshake thing getting fixed. The jetpacks on Grenier Hellions and Tusk Bailiffs are destroyable. Parazon Mercy kills count towards the Executioner Nightwave challenge. The double tap augment for the Latron can build damage stacks when attacking Arctic Eximus and Nullifier Bubbles, despite them both being a form of object health. The Captura camera can push around Lunaro Balls in the Zeraman Court scene. Narmor and Orax Rachnoids use a shrunk down Railjack weapon on their heads. The weapon specifically is either a Carcinox or a Fotor, though I don't know for sure because they look almost identical. If your Warframe goes down and you extract as your Operator via Last Stand, you won't lose any affinity unlike if you self-revived. The teleportation on heavies from Rift Strike and the Amar set allows you to teleport to enemies through glass. In Captura, Nidus has his max mutation look by default. If you're in the Orbiter or Drifter camp scene, however, you can enter and exit the Helminth room to restore his normal look. Radial Blind can be put on Umbra via the Helminth, which means you can give him two of what is basically the same ability. The Water Geyser at Twin Horns on the Plains is strong enough to launch Necromex, while the Flowers on the Valis and Drift cannot. Pressing the melee button as your operator while looking at your Necromech will cause you to instantly transfer to it and perform a melee attack. In the Necroloid area of the Necrolisk, the large pit behind Lloyd doesn't count as part of the operator-only zone, meaning that you can use your Warframe there. Rhino Prime, Ember Prime, Mag Prime, and Excalibur all have hidden lore entries if they're inspected in the Codex. Banshee's Silence ability works on Void Angels, which makes them basically harmless. Cute dog. What breed is she? <laughs> Melee ground slams don't halt the momentum of Zephyr's Tailwind. Pretty much nothing halts it, actually, which is really fucking annoying sometimes. Normally, when transferring from your operator to your Warframe, there is a brief delay of like half a second or so. You can press Melee to instantly transfer to your frame, but this will make you perform a Melee attack. However, if you have no Melee equipped, you will simply transfer instantly with no downside. Other than not having a Melee, of course. If you have a one-handed pistol and glaive equipped together, then pressing melee while your pistol was equipped will also transfer you instantly without performing any melee attack. Speaking of glaives, you can also cancel their ground slam with a roll at any point while airborne. If you're using combat discipline and spawn any specters, the kills from those specters will damage you as if you were killing the enemies yourself. Damage from combat discipline also has the ability to proc on damage buffs, like Arcane Avenger, Grace, and Guardian. Kills from Argazine turrets count as kills for the player who built them, and they can proc stuff like Growing Power and Combat Discipline. They also add to the stacks of Molt Augmented as well. The Omni and Railjack deals a small amount of cold damage and can actually kill things. The emissive effects on the head of the Exploiter Orb Articula don't scale with the rest of the model. The Octavia dancing at the Soma Chord is seemingly using a unique skin. On-call crew members don't count against the Level 30 Survival with No Kills Riven Challenge. The Wukong Spectre in the Index uses Wukong's old kit, as he can be seen casting Iron Jab periodically. The order of the preset mods placed on your companion determines their priority, going from left to right and top to bottom. Highest priority in the top left, lowest priority in the bottom right. In 2018, the Make-A-Wish Foundation fulfilled a wish for a kid named Eli by taking him to Tenocon that year. DE did a bunch of cool stuff to make the experience a special one for him, namely allowing him to voice a Relay NPC, which can be found here in Strata Relay. Welcome, Tenno! I'll leave a link to the Make-A-Wish video covering the topic in the description if you're interested. The pose for Harrow and his ability page and Baruch in the market preview for his collection are the same. Life support modules in the MR30 test show up with Forma icons when picked up. Elytra's ultimate can push around various friendlies in free roam, namely the Plains Drone during the Escort Bounty objective. Odonata's Energy Shell ability increases critical damage by 200% and adds 50% heat damage. This is seemingly mentioned nowhere in-game, which I find extremely confusing. In Sanctuary Onslaught, this Gas City tile will spawn enemies off in the distance away from standable terrain, causing them to fall to their deaths. Kinda fucked up, Samaris. 
In the Corpus ship tile set, in the reactor room, you can hack these four terminals to destroy the reactor, which also grants access to some hidden crates. The amount of energy you start with in a mission is actually determined by how much free mod capacity you have left on your frame. For every free point of capacity, your starting energy goes up by 5. Unairu's passive, Poise, grants immunity to slows in addition to knockdowns. It is possible to get more than 10 viral procs on Vor, though it's inconsistent and I don't actually think it does anything. You can invigorate 4 Warframes in one week if you have your swap ready, as you can actually use it on invigorations that have already been applied to other frames. Syndicate mission completions and Samara's target turn-ins don't count towards the daily cap, meaning you can still earn standing for completing them if your normal cap has been reached. Branching off of this, Eidolon shards don't count towards your daily focus cap either. The Korra Miyabi skin changes its name to the Korra... Oiran? I don't know how you say that. It changes its name to Korra Oiran when it's in your card on Steam. Kuva and Tenet weapons have the highest mastery requirements in the game, being 15 and 16 respectively. However, you can claim them from your foundry even if you don't hit the requirement, making it essentially meaningless. The only exceptions to this are the Tenet Melees, as they're purchased from a vendor and do require you to hit that 16 mastery. The projectile from Embolus Vile Discharge Augment uses the same model as the old Auric and Derelict Assassinate blueprints. Okay, so when making this series, I normally try to only talk about stuff that is in the game at the time of making, but this was just way too interesting to not bring up. Over in the Discord, Sabuchi pointed out that Hydroid's Undertow used to have a different reflection map, which was a screenshot of Dark Sector's second chapter, Exposure. Lastly, on Devstream 119, it was said by DE that more lore would be added to Garuda at some point. Well, yeah. first of all, Demerare wants to know if we'll ever have more lore for Garuda. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah? Y yeah. <laughs> yes, we will. Is that a yes? Definitely. Oh. Oh, that's a commitment. We, we had a whole thing going for Garuda that we didn't, yeah. we didn't, uh, we didn't release, that we didn't have time to <laughs> do with Fortuna. Um, yeah. All right. Very good. This isn't really an in-game thing. I just wanted to let everyone know that I still haven't forgotten. Gyre's Arc Sphere is attracted to Mag's Magnetize. This Mars tile in Sanctuary Onslaught is actually a reused tile from the old Law of Retribution raid. This Void Pyramid tile is also unique to Sanctuary Onslaught, appearing nowhere else in the game. The color of Korra's Whipclaw doesn't change along with her, minus the handle and the, uh, butt plugs at the end. This goes for Korra Prime, too. If you complete the Agility Drift puzzle, you'll notice these organs with white rings around their necks. If you launch yourself out of each of these, it opens some extra rooms in the upper platform area. When doing the Power Drift puzzle, you can use both your Operator and your Warframe to fill up the energy orbs quicker. Even stranger, this allows you to complete the puzzle without filling up all of the orbs. You can actually do the Coaction Drift puzzle completely solo by using your Warframe, your Operator, and a few Spectres. If you have an on-call Railjack crewmate and Loki's decoy, you don't even have to use any consumables. In the Endurance Drift room, you can shoot the backs of these laser plates to turn the lasers off. This, uh... This is how you're actually supposed to do the puzzle, with one person standing in the middle and the teammates shooting the lasers to keep them off. This has been suggested so many times though that I thought I may as well include it. When carrying a Deacon Veil in an Archon Showdown, nearby enemies are blinded. When making a Zaw, the Sephon Strike can be used to make either an Akana or a Staff. Strangely, this allows the Zaw Strike to benefit from Amalgam Daiku's Lifesteal effect as either an Akana or a Staff, when it normally only works on Nakanas. The base of the Wishing Well in the Corpus ship tile set can be shot right through without any need for punch through. There's a globe light in this classroom on the Zeremin that can be toggled on and off. You can also find various data pads around the Zeremin that, when interacted with, have Tuval explaining some of the lore surrounding the events of the jump. If the Railjack is being flown by a teammate or an AI crewmate, you'll stay snapped to it as an Arcwing so long as you're close. Liches can grapple rescue targets, and if they throw them off the map, they'll die instantly. In the Corpus Crash Ship tile set, this ice bridge can be destroyed by standing on it, but it can't be destroyed by any projectiles or explosions. If you do break the bridge, you can land on this floating ship chunk underneath it and ride it down to the teleport volume. You can also float around with this guy in the dry dock, though where he is specifically is client side so you can just see people floating around in multiplayer. Energy grabbed by the Operator is given to your Warframe, but it can't activate buffs like Energize or Energy Conversion. Picking up motes from Emergence Dissipate doesn't give energy to your frame, and neither does standing in range of an energy pad. 
Killing an Eximus enemy while in last gasp will revive you instantly. Summoned AI like Railjack crewmates and specters will target hives in the infested hive mode. Hall and his brothers normally just kinda spontaneously manifest when summoned, but if on an open world, they'll actually fly in on a dropship. Stealth attack damage actually scales with weapon level, from 100% more damage at unranked going up to 700% more damage at level 30. This damage does not go up beyond level 30 and is additive with crit damage. Dual Skana's blueprint preview shows two full-length Skanas, while the actual weapon has one short Skana and one regularly sized Skana. Veils taken by Call change color to match his color palette once he grabs them. Shard Hex Ephemera shards aren't actually stuck to the player, so if you move on something like a platform, you'll leave them behind. On some Ceres tiles, such as the Interception slash Defense tile and during the boss fight, lightning will periodically strike, damaging enemies and players. You can activate Transference as Temporal Anchor starts, maintaining your position and still benefiting from the rewind. Iron Staff visually increases in length as you add range mods. Slowing abilities like Temporal Drag slow the rate at which Liches recover health when down. Temporal Drag can also slow enemies with Overguard. In Captura, enabling friendly fire and magnetizing a teammate will cause them to be completely unable to move, unless they jump, where they'll just fly straight up. You can also die in Captura by getting Transference Static times 4, which is done by dying as your operator 4 times. If this happens, you'll go into the down state, eventually dying with no way of being revived. If this happens, it's a soft lock and requires you to either switch scenes or leave Captura entirely. Set mods have a different visual effect when equipped in the arsenal compared to normal mods. The Orican Eye Air support marks sentient cores, which lets you obliterate your teammates' eyes in an Eidolon hunt. By taking Scavenger, you can open containers in Sanctuary Onslaught. This normally only yields stuff like ammo, health, and energy, though I have heard that it can yield region-specific resources like Hexanon, and I have also had it drop credits for me on one occasion. Take the resource drops with a grain of salt though, I've never run into it myself. Some Jupiter tiles in Sanctuary Onslaught also can have their Amalgam Labs opened. Skyboxes in certain Sanctuary Onslaught tiles, primarily ones that take place in ships, show random space skyboxes, which can lead to weird and normally impossible combinations. Cernos Prime and Kuva Chakur have a 50% bonus to headshot damage, and Synapse has a built-in 20%, which multiply AFTER other headshot bonuses from stuff like Primary Deadhead. Call can't heavy attack with his Slaytra, but he can perform a heavy slam. Entering an extraction area will forcibly close the overlay map if it's open and prevent opening the stat screen, even if extraction isn't actually available. Allied Trokar units can still force the player into Operator with their staff. Corpus also have shield gating, where only 5% of the damage inflicted on them makes it through to their health once their shield breaks, though this is ignored if the shot is a headshot. If a headshot is a critical hit, it will have another 2 times damage multiplier on top of the crit damage and regular headshot multiplier. This goes for all enemies. Keeping with the headshot theme, the Haket has no headshot multiplier, but does take bonus damage when shot in the backpack. The Machinist also has no headshot multiplier, though the backpack isn't even part of the hitbox at all. Shooting your Relis 3 with surging blades into a Compressa bubble cluster causes a large bubble to appear and hold on to the blade, which can damage enemies touching the bubble and increases surging blades damage. Placing a Forma on Warframes, Weapons, and Companions gives them access to a second energy color channel though things that can't be polarized, like the Railjack and Operators and Drifters, will have this channel by default. Allied AI attack roller floofs in the Dog Days Captura scene, and pets will play with them if placed in the orbiter. Funnily enough, Voban's Tesla Nervos will hit them, but can't stick, making them chase the balls around pretty much forever. The blades orbiting Garuda during the charge for Seeking Talons actually deal damage to enemies and can push them around, with the damage scaling with strength. You have to get really close to enemies for it to trigger, though. Running into enemies with electric shield will knock them down, but for some reason Drox and Hayekas just get fucking launched. If you turn off an enemy's AI in the Simulacrum and then mind control them, it will remain off even if you turn enemy AI back on. Just south of Ostwan range on the plains, there's this zipline with a super fucked up texture. Mods like Amalgam Barrel Diffusion and Amalgam Serration still benefit you even if a sortie modifier prevents you from using the weapon it's equipped on. Incarnan weapons can be charged by headshotting corpses. Zenith's alt fire disc deals damage and has infinite punch through, which can be kinda goofy with mags too. The Penta's grenades can do this as well. Shout out to that B person on YouTube for posting the video that brought this to my attention. The Buzzlock can lock onto allies. The decoration snapping grid in the orbiter is actually off by about a half step when in the drifter camp, as compared to how the grid is laid out in the regular orbiter. The majority of Warframe arcanes still apply while in Arcwing. 
Weapon stats in the arsenal are in alphabetical order, so they appear in a different order depending on the language you have selected. In the Hunhao boss fight, you can enter your operator by activating Last Gasp, which shows the icon for Excalibur's Super Jump in your abilities. Selecting it shows Transference as its name, and it isn't usable. Looking at Hunhao through a Synthesis Scanner also reveals that he is secretly a Corpus Osprey. You can chat link a scrapped item called the Orican Monitor in-game, which seems to be a cut idea from the Fortuna update involving glaciers. Concealed explosives can be equipped on the Egret. Egret also instantly explodes on contact with water. Many ephemeras still work in the Lavarian. Varuna makes the eyes of the statues in the Circulus glow, though this doesn't work in the Captura scene. Void damage is unaffected by physical and elemental sortie modifiers, as it is technically neither. If a defection mission appears on a Corpus node, usually through a sortie, it still uses Grenier hacking. The mining laser has multiple zoom levels. The drop chances for Evara parts are significantly higher in Corpus Spy Railjack nodes when compared to normal Spy. Equipping the Okuri Tails Ephemera changes the primary energy channel color if no energy color is selected. This is most obvious on Necrosis Urkala Deluxe and Hildren's Einherry Deluxe. Wisp's passive shows her equipped weapons even if they're set to not be visible while holstered. Ciphers can't be used in sorties, nightmare missions, or Archon hunts, though Auto Breach and Perspicacity still work and actually have a unique animation when activating on an armor hack. Plane's ammo caches spawn at much larger than normal ammo drops. Might Rachnoids on the Valis also drop these huge ammo boxes. Warframes, operators, and even pets can trigger the Lunaro goals on the Zeraman. If you petrify a Grenier scanner with Atlas, their line of sight also gets petrified. When fighting the Exploiter Orb, throwing a Thermia canister while sliding in air will cause you to hit yourself with it, dealing damage. The Tonkor Grenade Launcher has an arming distance mechanic, where it doesn't explode until it has traveled at least 7.5 meters. Strangely, Kuva Tonkor completely lacks this mechanic. Shooting at a group of grounded Chondrox with Avara's Noise Arrow causes them to float upwards with no animation. Because Rescue on Eris has no Wardens, you get a free Rescue Point as if you've killed them all, which means that the quality of Spectre you get will always act like you've got at least one Rescue Point. Nightmare Mission drop tables are also affected by the Rescue Point system if the Nightmare Mission in question is a Rescue. If you don't understand what point system I'm talking about, we covered it in Volume 7. Several rocks and trees in the Drifter Camp can be destroyed by bullet jumping near them, which is likely just left over from the Lotus boss fight in the New War Quest. If you don't hack the console to start a survival mission for 5 minutes, it auto-starts. Itzal's Cosmic Crush can pull in Focus Orbs. Riven Slivers can drop in Mastery Tests, though you don't get to keep them once the test is over. The Spare Parts mod on Sentinels also works in the Simulacrum, though similarly you can't keep the drops. In Darvo's Relay Shop, the old rifle ammo can be seen amongst the new ammo boxes. Player-controlled Dargons can level up, with this level being separate from their normal enemy level. Grendel can eat fashion statues when friendly fire is enabled in Captura, but not Atlas, as his passive prevents him from being knocked down even as a statue. Grendel can also eat fish baits, which blow up in his stomach like when he eats a grenade. Zaku's Noble animation set has two different animations for wielding no weapons, wielding a rifle-type weapon, wielding a single pistol, and wielding dual pistols. A faint chime is played by the codex scanner whenever you move your cursor over a scannable item. For the regular codex scanner, the sound is different based on whether or not you've completed the codex entry for a given scannable thing, while for the synthesis scanner, it's unchanged. I imagine this is because you can't scan things with completed codex entries with the regular scanner, but you can with the synthesis scanner as it grants Samaris rep. I kinda mentioned this in a prior episode, but if an animal is close enough to be highlighted by the Trank rifle, it'll make a distinct beeping sound. 
Nyx's Mind Control can be used to boost the damage of player-controlled Dargans, though they will explode once the Mind Control timer ends. The trade and donation posts in the dojo make weird sounds when you wall hop on them. If you give an Incarnate Form weapon to a Rescuer defense target, they'll turn it back into its normal non-Incarnate version, but if you then take it back from them, it'll be in its Incarnate Form again. Disarming an Infested Runner or Leaper rips their arms off. Archon Stretch's Energy Regeneration effect can be activated by proccing the Retribution mod. On the planes, the Drone Escort Bounty objective will spawn the drone in the dead center of the search area, with the marker before entering the area being exactly on the drone. A Curia can be found in Call's Junk Run mission, though there is no way to scan it. If Grendel uses Feast on the final enemy in a defense wave, the wave will progress but the enemy will still be alive. Protea's Caldrius Deluxe grants her a new idle animation. Gara's Mass Vitrify can block Lloyd and Otak in Isolation Vaults. Dreadmirror's colors will change to your Arcwing colors if you cast the ability and then enter an Arcwing. Special Orbiter decorations called Prex cards can be found hidden in the Lavarian, with the frame on the card being the one from the Lavarian you found that card in. They only appear if the Warframe in question has been mastered, that is leveled to 30, and each card is hidden in a unique spot in its respective Lavarian. There are too many for me to show in this video, so I'll put together a playlist of the spots and link them in the description. Warframes with Lavarians aren't the only ones to have Prex cards though, as Caliban and Gyre have their own too. Calibans can be found hidden in the Drifter Camp atop a rock formation, and Gyres can be found on top of some lockers in the Chrysalith. Zaku also has a Prex card, which is interesting for several reasons. It is the only Warframe Prex card sold by Barrow Katir, along with several other Prex cards from Creatures from the Heart of Deimos update. It is also the only Warframe Prex to not show the name of the Warframe or the release number, and it is also the only Warframe Prex where the Warframe is wearing an alternate helmet. If you search for the name of a combo element in the weapon modding menu, it will pull up mods that contain its constituent elements. Similarly, you can quickly find items with focus lenses when equipping items by searching the name of the focus school. Grenier and Apalm still use the old model for the Ogress. You can find one of these in Darvo's shop, too. Vapus researchers can be found in Jupiter Archon missions if a lab is open. They strangely aren't veiled and will actually attack Narmer units if they enter the lab. The Lone Guardian's Void Zone boosts the cast speed for operator abilities as well. If an enemy is capturing an interception point and is corrupted by a Void Fisher, their hacking will be interrupted and they'll stop capturing. Dargan Eximus units in Grenier Arcwing have regular Eximus units piloting them. If Broken War has no stance equipped, it will use the Vengeful Revenant stance instead of the normal stanceless moveset. When in the Helminth Chair, you can select this little plus icon to show what abilities and stats you have on each of your configs, with any Helminth abilities being yellow and the rest being white. Casting Zata's Whisper briefly shows some of the tendrils from the Lok's Embrace Ephemera if it's equipped. The wind effects of the Drifter Camp still apply when inside the Orbiter and the Landing Craft. Temporal Drag can slow down Kuva Clouds. When looking at the Orican Cell in the market, you can find a purchasable blueprint that costs 100 Platinum. This is the only blueprint so far as I'm aware that costs Platinum outright, and the resources needed to make one cell using the blueprint are pretty outrageous. Who is this even for? If Garuda uses Bloodletting before a Railjack mission fully loads, her health will be restored when it finishes loading. The Grenier Asteroid base possesses a unique mobile defense tile where two regular mobile defense objectives are done, and then a cryopod is done at the end. What's interesting about this is that the person sleeping in the cryopod is completely absent until the tram with the pod stops moving. These lasers in the Grenier Sea Lab can damage you and cause bleeding. Similarly, the Electrified Rail on the Ceres defense tile will damage and electrify you if you touch it. The instant last gasp revive on Eximus kill mentioned in the last episode also works on Prosecutors. The muzzle flash when firing the Dex Sybaris is the Lotus logo. In endless game modes on the Zeriman, you can hold the button in the elevator to skip the wait for an individual extract. Oh yeah, for those who don't know, you can lead by yourself in endless mission types by just extracting without anybody else. Hitting a cruise ship in one of its engines with the forward artillery results in an instant kill. The Lotus gives Patient Zero dialogue when fighting the Mesa Spectre at the Eris Junction, as its code is likely reused from the Mesa boss fight in Patient Zero. Narmer Deacons use the Infested Health type. Many of the Stalker's Acolytes wear armor pieces in spots that aren't normally possible, such as Misery wearing the Daedalus chest piece as a cod piece, and Torment using parts of Equinox's tassels despite being based on Mesa. Violence also uses a Destreza and a single Venka Claw, though the Claw is purely visual. Juno Elite Crewmen do this too, wearing the She chest piece as a backpack. Styanax has a unique sound when walking that sounds like armor clanking.
Similarly, if using the default shoulder armor for Labos, you can hear the liquid moving around in the vials when you walk. The Stalker is able to spawn inside the Granum Void. I'm not sure about Zanuka though, but I imagine that probably works. The Intruder mod, which normally grants more hacking duration, slows down the movement of the hacking head during a Grenier hack, as duration isn't a mechanic for those. The cell value of a Requiem mod goes down as you use up their charges, from 50,000 credits or 1,000 endo at 3 charges, to 25,000 credits or 500 endo when defiled. Vectus, Vectus Prime, and Buzzlock can all reload while scoped in. When on the Zeremin, the ambient noise actually changes based on where you are in certain rooms. For example, in the Lunara room, crowd noises can be heard when out on the court, with the sound of children being heard when in the locker room. When Misery uses Shadows of the Dead, it can resurrect other Acolytes as shadows. On this Europa Extraction tile, there's a large fan that periodically turns on. Standing on this fan launches you towards the Extraction Zone. If you mash jump after being knocked down, you'll stand up much faster than normal. This has to be done pretty early into the knockdown though, or else you'll get a different animation that is much slower. When using Axios Javelin, the spear Styanax throws matches his color palette when in his hand, then changes to its default coloration once it leaves it. Even stranger, once the spear has skewered an enemy and collided with the service, it goes back to matching Styanax's colors. If you're grabbed by a tether from a scorpion or an ancient, you have several ways to break out. You can either roll, like mentioned in earlier episodes, but you can also melee attack to cut the rope, or bullet jump, which ragdolls the enemy that grabbed you. You can also block a grab attempt outright with a melee weapon. If Loki's decoy dies in a nightmare mission with the timed modifier, it will increase the amount of time on the clock. Baruch's Desert Wind increases in damage as you gain melee combo. I've tested this with every other exalted melee, and as far as I can tell, this mechanic is unique to Baruch, which is really weird because the waves from his fists don't even contribute to his combo. Earlier in this series, I mentioned the Y key being a hard-coded, non-rebindable button to use ciphers instantly. Well, as Shovel found over on the Discord, there are several other hard-coded keybinds that do interesting stuff. Y can be used not just for ciphers, but also to cancel a queued mission in the navigation console, or to instantly access the upgrade menu for a selected item in the arsenal. It also opens the sorting tab in most menus, and can be used to open the dropdown in the market. The N and M keys are treated as tab left and right, and can be used to do so in most menus, such as the foundry, the inventory, and the mods menu. Strangely though, this doesn't work in the codex. When in the arsenal, the N key tabs left like you'd expect, but the M key opens the loadout menu. The final attack in Swirling Tiger's Dancing Hunter combo contains an additional Phantom hit, which deals 200% of the weapon's modded elemental damage, but 0% of the weapon's base damage. This hit doesn't contribute to the melee combo counter, and can't proc status effects. On the Aeris tile set, you can shoot this barrel and then hack this console to deploy a container with an explosive barrel sticking out. Shooting the barrel explodes the container, which grants drops like a normal crate. Weirder still, the console is single-use, so if you fail, you can't try it again, and if you don't shoot the barrel, the container just falls into the pit in the center of the room. Why all this work for a crate? In the lower level of Lorunda Relay, you can find this parent sequence operative sleeping in a tree. Call can't perform a slam attack unless he has a jetpack equipped. He doesn't actually need to fly to do the slam, he just for some reason needs to have the jetpack on. Okay. I'm only including this because Salus said I would get a billion views if I did, but enabling friendly fire allows you to use the Nucor's microwave passive to enlarge the body parts of teammates. Most notably Wisps. Yeah. What the hell do I even cover in this series anymore? When zoomed in with the mining laser, which can be done using alt fire while scope, the speed at which the mining bar fills is slowed. On this Earth Spy Vault, you can shoot these two orange lights to build two halves of a bridge, allowing you to complete the Spy Vault without jumping. If you were, you know, stupid enough to try that. The vent used to bypass Narmer and Fortuna is still present post-quest, and even still has its little tooltip. The vent kids are gone, though. When logging in, Jire and Satrine have a slightly faster getup animation than other frames. Tusk Reavers can be disarmed despite being a melee enemy, which removes their hammer and locks them out of their jetpack. When doing Spy on Mars, you can look out this window and see Mars from orbit, despite being on the surface. If Ortis starts a transmission right as a sortie transmission ends, he jump scares you. 
Around Duviri, you can find these special statues of Thrax praising the sun or something. If you look at the base of the statue, you can see an Orican word, which translates to bow. If you have either the bow or deep bow emote equipped, doing it in front of the statue will cause the word to glow, and a crate will spawn. It doesn't drop much, but it's still pretty cool. Throughout Duviri, you can actually find mission control characters so long as they aren't the current spiral objective, and they have unique dialogue when approached. Mathilla can be found on the porch of this house at Mathilla's farm. Coral, the kid who helps with animal rescues, can also be found brushing a cave nearby. Wait, what the fuck is she brushing? Loden can be found in the north corner of Upper Haven. Bombastine can be found on his stage at the Agora. Lucinia can be found practicing her opera at the Chamber of the Muses. And Sithil can be found in this boarded up house at Titan's Rest. I can fix her. Strangely enough, unlike the other characters, Sithil is always present, even if fear is the current spiral. I imagine this is a bug, though. Dotted around Duviri, there are 12 locations where the Shazen can be played. Each Shazen has a unique song which can be played on two difficulties, Normal and Virtuoso. If you complete all 12 songs on Virtuoso, you actually unlock the Courtly Shazen to be played outside Duviri, which makes it the only entirely free Shazen so far as I'm aware. I'll leave a link to Buffoon's video in the description if you want more details on how to get it and how it sounds. Speaking of Shazen songs, several of the song names are actually references to the Duviri lore fragments. Examples include Lorne Shores, Galeria Delights, and The Day the Earth Bled, among others. If you go behind your horse in Teshin's cave, you can find a hidden area behind these leaves that leads to the update credits. When loading into the Undercroft, you can shoot these lamps to turn them on. If you roll before hitting the ground as the Drifter, you'll avoid all fall damage. This works outside of Duviri as well, though you still take a small amount of damage there. The training dummy in Teshin's cave occasionally talks when you hit them. Ouch! Ow! Speaking of the cave, whenever you're present there, the Lotus Hand is grayed out, and using Guiding Hand grays out the room. This is in contrast to its use in normal Duviri, where Guiding Hand removes the desaturation effect. Despite saying that Joy's Spiral is void damage, Mathilla actually deals Tau and Blast damage. When doing an objective involving the Operator Mirror, using a melee attack while looking through one can cause the Operator to use the old Void Blast animation. Blocking causes them to assume the stance too. Dax enemies with Overguard can be knocked down by shooting them during a special attack. Duviri Captura scenes use the mostly unique Calm Spiral state, which only otherwise appears during the Duviri Paradox quest, though DE has said they may add it in the future, so if that happens, ignore this entry I guess. Because Krubies use the same rig as Kubros, and Kubros have stubby tails, only the joint connecting their tails to their body actually wags, as opposed to the whole tail. Bushes in Duviri and the Undercroft slow you when you walk through them, with this even affecting the Kaith. If you keybind mounting the Kaith and then enter your operator after pressing the keybind, you'll spawn the horse with no rider. Even stranger, this allows other players to mount your Kaith, and you can then summon them again, causing you to both ride the same horse. Headshots from unconventional sources, like melee attacks and even abilities, can still trigger Bombastine's malice. That- Did you guys fucking see that? Is that did anyone just interpret what just happened there? My Razorfly rocked Bombastine's Malice by getting a headshot, which killed half the enemies I was going to use for my fucking... Oh my god. For my Dissipate. What the fuck, dude? On controller, holding the right bumper temporarily turns off interact prompts in the orbiter. Backflips go farther than a normal roll. On the Corpus ship tile set, you can sometimes find this side room which contains some sort of reception counter manned by two domestic drones. There's also a corpus hologram who disappears out of fear if you approach them. Going behind the counter, panels in the walls pop out if you approach them, yielding crates, and you can even find this one with explosive barrels that detonates when shot, though unfortunately there isn't anything behind it. Despite being mostly submerged into the ground, the Eidolon bones on the planes are fully modeled. In this Grenier sabotage room, you can shoot this orange light above the door to open it. When doing mobile defense on Eris, you can enter this unique airlock room. Pressing this button in the middle of the room will vent two airlock doors down below, which deals a small amount of damage and pulls you towards the open door. You can charge in Karnin meter by shooting a Vombalist in the face, even if it's a ghost. Mending Shot and Thunderbolt can't be equipped on the same bow, as it turns the bow AoE, though an inconsistent one. Concealed Explosives and Energizing Shot can't be equipped at the same time either. In addition to regular grenades, Grendel can also eat non-lethal ones, such as tethers. Speaking of grenades, they can also be destroyed by ground slams in addition to direct shots. Healing Marilina through Marilina Guardian triggers Archon Intensify. 
The statue of Baruch in the simulacrum can have its cloth parts moved around by AoE attacks. Gendro can be spawned in Capturo when playing as Call. He can then copy Call, and even uses the Veilbreaker periodically. You can move around a bit during Azathane's slam windup, which doesn't do much other than just letting you spin around. In the Corpus ship weapon room, you can stand on these plates on each side of the window to show off two different Corpus Railjack fighters. Grendel can eat Dargons in the Kuva Fortress, which have a unique portrait for the stomach UI. The slow from cold procs and call missions also slows your cooldowns. Why though? <laughs> Body part enlargement from Nucor is permanent if the enemy is petrified when the enlargement occurs. The fog colors in a player's profile preview are determined by the primary and secondary Warframe colors of the equipped Warframe, with the top layer being the primary and the bottom layer being the secondary. If an allied Lich spawns and you also have them on call, you can have two of the same Lich active at once. Items can be picked up while rolling, which plays no animation, allowing you to pick up items much faster. Some old Tenogen items on PC actually cost Platinum, as their existence predates the modern Tenogen program. In the Ceres Sabotage mission, you can upload the data mass and destroy the reactor in any order, but on Mars, the door to the reactor is locked unless you upload the data mass. Was unlocking the door not the whole point of uploading the data mass? <laughs> what the fuck? This starting room in the Grenier asteroid base has several floating crates and a door on the ceiling if you look behind you. Weapons with special heavy attacks, like Corafel and Tenet Agendus, can use regular heavies if they're done during a slide attack. Drifter can also access regular heavies while sliding on Azathane and... How do you- The Hammer. I don't know how to fucking say it. The Hammer. You can't shoot through the water to the surface on this Uranus spawn tile. You can't use your operator at all if helping another player in the second dream. There's also a unique Orbiter skybox of Lua in the Void present only in the quest, as well as this elevator tile, which appears nowhere else in the game. In addition to its unique heavies, Seum also has a unique block mechanic which deflects shots back at attackers. This is Virgil's parry mechanic. Th this thing is just Yamato. The bees from Zymos headshots ignore the rift and can attack enemies regardless of their rift status. Volt's capacitance augment works on excavators. The heal from Sancti Magistar's heavies can heal Necros' shadows. The Dax Equin phase change can be done as the Warframe, which causes the health bar to disappear. Speaking of, the Kaith Rider enemy is labeled as a Gladius, and while she does have the same special attacks, most of her normals are actually different on account of her using an Azathane instead of the normal Seum. Notes that don't exist in a Shazen song don't count against your score, so you can perfect a song despite mashing notes that don't exist. This doesn't work in Duviri though, unfortunately. Lens arrows don't explode when shot into water. If you have a radiation proc as Voban, enemies can eat your overdrivers. If you load into the Dorma Zone after a daily reset, you can claim your reset reward there, which causes you to face the wrong way while kneeling. The letter present in a relic's name is determined by the first initial of its rare item. So I if it's a Navara part, N if it's a Nidus part, T if it's a Tenora part, and so on. As a follow-up to a much earlier entry about Clem and Iron Wake, Clem's creator Data Reaper now has his own memorial nearby. For those who don't know, Data Reaper tragically passed away on August 28th, 2022. This memorial features his most used Warframe, Excalibur Prime, as well as the primed version of the Cronin, a weapon Data Reaper actually contributed to the game during a community weapon contest. Rest in peace, man. Your work brought more joy to Warframe and its community than you could ever imagine. To avoid ending on such a sad note, I want to talk about something that I didn't even realize was that unknown. John Prodman. In the Index, if you play for one hour on any difficulty, you'll encounter a secret boss known as John Prodman. Defeating him drops an autographed poster of the man himself, and for those confused as to why this even matters, Prodman is actually a community character from way back in the early days of Warframe. In short, somebody posted the saga of a lone prod crewman beating Fulred to death, and the resulting meme was eventually immortalized in-game with this secret boss. On to some lore surrounding Prodman, he was apparently the first Corpus crewmate to ever surpass Zanuka as the Corpus Employee of the Month. He also once turned down a Detron in favor of his iconic Prova, and apparently all Prod crewmen are actually named after him. Also, going back to the poster he drops, there are actually a few other posters you can get from Ludaplex games. You can get one for Wormius upon defeating the Helios boss at the end for the first time, one for Happy Zephyr if you hit 30 points, and one for Framefighter if you collect every character by scanning all Framefighter character datas. Embers 4 grants affinity on use, but doesn't cost any energy if no enemies are hit by it, allowing it to generate affinity infinitely like Bone Widow's 1. 
In the same vein though, it's rather inefficient. The Venka Prime possesses a unique 13x melee combo. This doesn't scale with combo mods like Blood Rush, Weeping Wounds, or the Gladiator set, but stat stick abilities do benefit from the extra combo amount. On Eris, you can occasionally encounter MOAs with the name Corpus Walker. These MOAs have no shields and can perform Shockwave MOA slams despite seemingly just being standard MOAs. If you capture a target or interact with a life support module while in void mode, you can void sling during the animation lock. The special slam attack properties on Tenet Exec and the Hammer work with slams from stance combos. I'll show on screen now what combos work in each stance. Magus Lockdown on Kuva Clouds doesn't actually stop them, at least not anymore, but the Lancer Head is still there. Enemies can't contest interception nodes if hit by something that ragdolls and suspends them, or if they turn allied. Examples include Vortex, Larva, Divine Spears, Strangle Dome, Coil Horizon, The Lifted Status, Tornadoes, Sandstorm, Enthrall, and Accuse. Enemies launched out of Frost Bubble when it's cast take true damage when colliding with terrain, which ignores their armor. Ranger enemies in Corpus Arcwing have four Opticors taped together as their jetpack. The player is also scaled down in Arcwing, presumably for technical reasons, but it makes everything else disproportionately massive. Nidus Spectres don't need mutation stacks to cast Parasitic Link or Ravenous. Sliding while wearing any Edo chest armor causes an energy effect to envelop the Warframe. Companions can attack the Fashion statues in the Orbiter and the Dormazone if friendly fire is enabled in Captura. The resource splash screen from mining can be skipped by switching weapons, entering the operator, or most conveniently, performing a melee attack. This allows you to mine quite a bit faster, but do know that this does cause resources to not count for the Nightwave challenge. Tusk Seeker drones actually spit out different colored flares depending on the type of reinforcements they're calling in. Red flare summon a Furbolg. Pink a Bulkor. Purple for drop pods. Blue for a Tusk Dargan. And most interestingly, Green Flare summon a Tusk Ogma, which fires missiles at players and performs bombing runs. If you pick up a Zarya Macalade in a Zaraman mission, you can bring it all the way back to your Dormazone. If you're holding it during extraction, it'll disappear, but if you drop it on the ground, it'll persist into the chrysolith. If you pick it up again, you won't be able to drop it, but as a workaround for this, you can pick it up as your operator, as transferring back to your Warframe will cause you to drop it again. You can do this with Lunaro Balls too, and when in the Dorm Zone, they can even be thrown around with alt fire like they can be in missions. Oberon's Renewal provides players with a constant status cleanse when at full health, which means that any status effects they are hit with are immediately dispelled. This has some interesting effects different from proper status immunity. Single target DOTs, being Heat, Toxin, and Slash, deal damage after a 1 second delay, so they're pretty much ignored. Multi target DOTs, being Gas and Electric, deal damage instantly, so you'll take the first tick, but none more. Magnetic procs will cause the HUD scramble like normal, but they'll only take 20 energy instead of the normal 100, as they drain energy over the course of their duration, which gets cut short. Knockdowns also function as normal, so if you want to avoid those, make sure to stand on the weed carpet. Aiming down sight draws the Warframe on top of anything else in the environment, which causes some weird looking stuff. Mesa's 4 counts for this too. Abilities that ally enemies, such as Enthrall and Mind Control, force most of their deployables to stay allied after the ability expires. The ghosts from Ballistica Prime and Sinoid Heliocore also keep deployables allied after the ghost disappears. When piloting a Railjack, a cinematic cam can be accessed by holding either right control on PC or by pressing up on the D-pad for console. Inaros has a hidden passive where any melee finishers he performs have lifesteal. This seemingly isn't mentioned anywhere in-game, but it is brought up in his Warframe profile. While Inaros has no shields, performing finishing kills will restore his health. All Railjack skins have unique wear and tear effects. Most notable of these is the Tempestari skin, where the wear and tear appears as void contamination. Throughout the open world social spaces, you can find hidden areas containing credits for the update. I already showed the one for Duviri in Volume 10, so to end off this video, I'm going to show the other four in Cetus, Fortuna, the Necrolisk, and the Chrysalith.
And with that, we've come to the end of the video. Over a year of content, over 500 entries, all trimmed and repackaged into one more cohesive whole. It really puts into perspective how much stuff we've covered up to this point, doesn't it? If you've made it this far, I want to give you a huge thank you. I'm really interested to see my analytics for this one, so if you're still watching, include the phrase, I don't know, chalky chair somewhere in the comments. And if any of you somehow get that unbelievably niche reference, you are the realest of real ones. Of course, a massive thank you as well to everybody who helped out with this series, from suggesting entries to those who helped with filming. This series, and by and large my channel, wouldn't have been possible without you. This video is in no way heralding the end of Weird and Obscure, by the way. I just realized that over time, lots of stuff has changed, and I thought that it might be best to go through everything and try to make it as accurate and concise as possible. There's still more to come, don't worry. Normally I'd ask you to like and sub and join the Discord and all that, but to be honest I'd wager maybe 5% of you are still watching, so there's not really a point. Do whatever you want, I'm not your dad. At least, not as far as you know.